Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Tim. And you notice my sign. Long time listeners, watchers, will see that my sign is back. We found it. That was the sign my daughter gave me when I started this, fueled by Jesus and coffee. And so, good morning and welcome. And it gets you Dramamine right away. I'm going to give you just a quick video tour before we start. And I found a good spot here. We're down by the lake. This is the, the lake at Camp Machindo. The footbridge over here to some of the campuses back there. And this is the place where the kids love to hang. The beach house right here. The showers. And uh, there's a dining facility right up there. And so this morning, this is where I am. I just wanted you to see the lake. It's just gorgeous this morning. Okay, so much for that awkward opening. <laughs> and we're going to settle in there. And I do have my cup of coffee. And I encourage you uh, to get yours. It turns this way. Coffee. Happy camper. So all this is acknowledging my daughter who supports my, my videos by liking them. Sometimes by watching them. <laughs> and with the paraphernalia to, for display. So she's got a good heart. Well, this morning is, is an awkward day for me. It's getaway day. Everybody's, most everybody's leaving. Our, our week work was over yesterday and the people are moving on to their next project. And so there's that thing that happens where I begin to knit relationships with all these different people. And then they're torn apart, torn asunder. It's not quite the same as a divorce, I don't think, but nonetheless it hurts a little bit. But the cool thing is these are all people that I'm going to be spending eternity with in heaven. And I get to know them a little bit today. And, and we all have the common goal, the common purpose. And so it's a good thing. It's a really good thing. Uh, yeah. We're going to be here till Monday, and then we're traveling on. Uh, we're going to stop and see some sowers along the way that we met at a previous project in Texas. Spend a couple nights with them and a day with them. And then head on to Colorado Springs. So today we have a, a bit of a free day. It's video day. And... Laundry day and homework day. My wife's back in school doing two classes that are crazy. So we have a busy day. We have things to do. How's your life going? This is my video blog. I've been doing it for, for a year and a half. And uh, it's been great. And last week, I had the opportunity to, to answer a question from one of my viewers. It's nice to have multiple viewers. <laughs> you guys are crazy. You have other things to do that are probably more important. Good morning, Father. I just want to pray your blessing upon this day and this video. Pray your blessing upon those who are watching, whether right away or later, whenever they watch it, that your word would be honored and glorified, and that you would receive glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. So the, the video I did last week, which I entitled "Grace, uh, Religion v. Grace, or Grace v. Religion, I can't, Grace v. Religion, I think. And I was talking about... Uh, identified myself as so the question was what religion are you so I talked about that in some detail but there was not enough time there wasn't enough time and so I wanted to delve a little bit further into a, a related topic to that which is the authority of the scripture the authority of the Word of God so how do you know that you have a good uh, your religion is right how do you know anything about God besides what you can see through his creation and what you can know inside of yourself because you're made in his image fallen as it is is the word of God scripture and that is so important I cannot over stress how much your ability to rely on scripture as coming from God is and let me touch that and this is a topic we could do three hours on with no problem we could do a whole a semester in school on and I'm not going to get that deep I just can't the scripture itself identifies itself as coming from God uh, the scripture says that Paul wrote that all scriptures get is God breathed God moved the writers to write the very words that were written uh, under inspiration God breathed uh, Peter says the, the uh, holy men of old wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So God comes and, and, and puts his word through people. The scripture is full of places 
that indicate that it's from God. Jesus gave it its full blessing by quoting from almost all the books in the Old Testament. Uh, you have heard it. And when the devil came to tempt Jesus, uh, the, the, the battle was won by Jesus quoting the word of God, quoting scripture. And so all scripture is true and reliable. And, and you have to have, you have to hold scripture as an authoritative position. That everything else that you might hear, uh, philosophy, any, any other person's opinion, any prophecy, anything, has to be subject to the test of Scripture. The Scripture is the final authority in this age. When Jesus comes to rule here in a few years or a few months, whenever it will be, he will be the final authority. But until then, he's given us his word, and his word is the final authority. And the problem we have is if you don't hold that position, if you, this is where the cults come from. This is where the dead churches come from. If you don't hold to the position that the scripture is the final authority, then you get error, error, error. And for instance, okay, the cults, most cults will elevate some other scripture, some other document, some other human as having divine authority uh, for the Book of Mormon is, is a great example uh, and many of these other cults will have a, a position where a person is given revelation that supersedes scripture is more important than scripture that that interprets scripture uh, scripture interprets people we don't interpret scripture by changing it with a prophecy God is consistent he will not deviate from what he has already spoken it says his word has been sent forth and it will accomplish that what he has been sent forth. It's going to get it done. He doesn't need new scripture. Uh, the word of God is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing between the sword, I can't say it, uh, ligaments and the joints and, and thoughts and intents of the heart. This is scripture. This is what scripture says about itself. The word of God is important. So if, if I if I come up with a new revelation, whether given positive, even if an angel proclaims a different gospel, let him be accursed. So the Book of Mormon has come from an angel, supposedly, and let him be accursed. You cannot, God has spoken and it is done. You do not have more scripture coming. And then there may be the gift of prophecy, but any prophecy given is to be tested by scripture. God will not contradict himself. And so even, even the Catholic Church, uh, sorry Leo, but the Catholic Church has elevated the Pope, has created the Pope as, as God's man on earth to speak God, as if he were God. And he does not have that authority. His, whatever he says cannot be taken as more authoritative than Scripture. Scripture must interpret what the Pope has to say, if he has anything to say, Scripture is number one. All things are subject to Scripture. And that's what keeps you from error. Now, in churches sometimes, um, they they lose the gospel. They lose the gospel. And, and they substitute a man-made religion of, of doing good things and being good people. And they don't preach the gospel. The gospel that Jesus is the Son of God who came and lived a perfect life allowed himself to be killed, was crucified and buried and raised on the third day for our justification as a substitute for me, as a substitute for you. That gospel is not there. And, and salvation by grace through faith, that gospel has been forgotten and lost. And so without the word of God and the gospel which is contained in the word of God, that any kind of error can come. And Jesus predicted this. In Matthew 13, he was given some parables about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like a tree, a seed, was put in the ground and a great tree grew. And the birds of the air came and nested in its branches. That's a parable. So what does that mean? I'm about to get me a sip of something. 
Jesus is the seed it sowed. The gospel of the kingdom of heaven is the, is the seed, and it was sown in the ground. And from that, a single single trunk grew. And that would be the, the early church. There was no division. There was, if you, went to, you were either a Christian, a Christ follower, or you weren't. You followed the way, or you didn't. And so there was only one Christian church. There was no denominations. But as time went on, and, and the persecution on the church kept it pure, and then Constantine, and I can't remember what, 300-something, whatever it was, declared Christianity to be the official religion of the state and endorsed it. And then you begin to get the power uh, structure. You, you have the... Uh, elite who can read and the ones who are illiterate and only the scriptures in the hands of the, the clergy, the elite, and they begin to interpret stuff and, and take power. And you had conferences of the, the church would get together from different areas to get together and discuss different important decisions about doctrine. And so you see that happen and you see the church begin to splinter. New little branches would come off. And as some of these things were discussed, and, and people didn't like the decisions that were made, and so they would form their own denomination, as it were, a branch of the church. And so you have branches. So by the time you get to today, after the Reformation and all the things that have happened, uh, you have how many denominations of church are just in your city? Now we've traveled the country, and we have seen areas where Baptist churches are predominant, areas where Methodist churches are predominant. Different places have different predominant branches of the church. But in your own city, back home in Reno, you can probably find 20 different or 30 different denominations. And then you get to the, now we have non-denominational. Independent churches that claim to be followers of Christ. So you have this gigantic tree with just branches and branches and branches and leaves. That's the state of the world today. The tree is fully grown. And it says the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. The birds in other parables represent the demonic, satanic activity. For instance, the, the seeds that were sown, uh, the bird came and took the seed so they wouldn't grow. And they, you find that as the devil come and took the seed. And so you, what we have is many of the branches of the church are full of birds. Okay, that's the uh, doctrines of demons. These are false churches that have lost the gospel or polluted the gospel. You have a lot of these uh, dead branches in our church that are covered in birds. Uh, no life there. Um, I went to an Episcopalian church as a child, and I never really heard the gospel. I learned some rituals and some things, but I never heard the gospel. The only thing good there is that I had an idea of who Jesus was. So then when I did hear the gospel, I had a context to put him in. It wasn't just, uh, who's this dude? You know, I'd heard that he had died on a cross. That's what I knew. And that's important. Just that fact alone, that, that Jesus died on a cross, is the entry point of the true gospel into your heart. So that's, the authority of the word of God is the thing. You take that away, and then you can have all kinds of error. You can, you can have David Koresh. You can have uh, John Jones. You can have all these different kinds of cults because they have substituted their authority over the authority of Scripture. So Christian out there, check yourself. Is the gospel being preached in your church? Is the word of God held above all? Sola fidelis, sola scripture. Only faith and only the scripture. Uh, Lord God, thank you for your word. It is true. It is reliable. It is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. I have done a very short, weak job of apologizing for your, your word, of explaining the, the source and truth of your word. There's so much to be known, and there's so many books out there, so many authors, uh, they can be people want to know is the scripture authoritative they can find out there's great reason to believe it you know my faith depends on it lord if, if i can't count on your word then how am i going to really trust you it's just up in the air but your word is clear about so many things and i can trust you i'm counting on what you have said and i believe it lord i believe your word 
every jot and tittle, which will not pass away until all things will be fulfilled, as Jesus said. So I pray for my listeners today that they would be aware of the importance of your word as far as its authority goes, and that they would submit themselves to it, and they would have their blinders off to watch for those who are not uh, acknowledging your word as authoritative. The final authority, your word. Thank you, Lord. And I can't wait for you to come. And then and then you will speak your word plainly again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, uh, people, I'm working so hard. You see this. I'm working so hard to keep this down to a reasonable level. I have so much to say, and I can let my mouth go. But this is the important thing today. Remember that the Word of God has great authority and, and subject yourself to it and use it to be your rule and guide every day of your life. And remember, we're powered by Jesus. Oh, by the way, Jesus is called the Word of God, the Logos of God in John chapter 1. Jesus is the full expression of God and Jesus gives his authority to Scripture. Count on him. Count on it. Okay, God bless y'all, and we'll see you, Lord willing, in Colorado Springs next week. Amen. Bye. Oh, that, that's all, folks. I forgot what my...